Time for another dramatic legislation update for the state of California. So we have two important bills that are under consideration right now and two important propositions that will be on the ballot on November 3rd. We are here to give you an update on those. All tenants and landlords need to know what's going on. Hey there, Christian Walsh, Cobalt Banker Way Associates. We are real estate brokers who help people like you, landlords and tenants, buyers and sellers, in the state of California, and we're here for another update. We did one of these a month, a month or two ago. It was a popular video. People can't believe some of the legislation that's coming down the pike in California, and we're here to update things. So the first two, these are bills related to uh, non-payment of rent due to COVID-19. So we have discussed these briefly in other videos. Uh, we're here to give you the latest version of these bills. And these, if they're gonna pass, it's gonna be before the end of the month. And we are currently in August right now. So before the end of August, these bills would pass. Evictions are gonna start to move forward for the state of California. We did a video on that. These will prevent tenants from being evicted if they can't pay rent due to COVID-19. Oh, and don't forget, we can't give tax or legal advice, but we can help you find the professionals who can. So AB 1436 is the first bill in consideration. And this one states that a tenant not paying rent due to COVID-19 is able to stay put until April 1st, 2021, or 90 days after the emergency order is declared over before the eviction can start. It also states that the landlord has to wait until April 1st, 2022, or 15 months after the emergency is declared over, whichever is earlier, they have to wait that time before they can go after the tenant for unpaid rent. So that's a long, long wait for landlords. Now, what's in it for landlords? This bill states that a landlord can ask their mortgage servicer or lien holder for forbearance. If the rental property is one to four units, they can get up to 360 days of forbearance from their mortgage payments. If it's five plus, you get half that, 180 days of mortgage forbearance. So that is what AB 1436 states. Okay, the next bill related to non-payment of rent due to COVID-19 is SB 1410. And SB 1410 is different from AB 1436 because this one is voluntary between landlords and tenants. So this is a voluntary agreement. And the agreement is a COVID-19 eviction relief agreement. So there's gonna be an actual document that landlords and tenants voluntarily agree to sign and if they sign that, the landlord cannot evict the tenant for non-payment of rent due to COVID-19. Curious what one of those agreements looks like? Go ahead, down below you'll see we have a sample agreement. You can click on that and read through that. It may change, but just to let you know, that's a current version of a, a sample agreement. So what the bill states then is that the tenant will pay back the state of California starting on April 1st, 2024. They will start paying back the state of California for any back rent that's owed. The landlord is able to deduct from their income tax due to the state of California any of the unpaid rent, and they're able to start doing that deduction on January 1st, 2024. So the real question is, are landlords going to be able to wait that long to get their rent? And the other question is just how many tenants and landlords are going to agree to this eviction relief agreement. So that is another important bill, and that one also would need to be passed before the end of the month. All right, so we're moving on to the propositions. It'll be on the ballot come November 3rd, 2020. Should be a pretty big <laughs> ballot initiative year and a year to vote, because we also have to choose a president. So this is a big, big election. But we're gonna discuss uh, some two important bills that'll be on the ballot that are related to real estate. Landlords, tenants, buyers and sellers need to know about these. The first one is Prop 21, known as the Rental Affordability Act, the Local Rent Control Initiative. And this is, if you remember in 2018, we had Prop 10. And what Prop 10 was set to do was put into place uh, rent control across the state of California. It was defeated. This is Prop 10 2.0. So what this will do, it's a little less stringent than last time, but for all intents and purposes, it's, there's a lot of similarities. It'll roll back some of the protections that are put in place by Costa Hawkins, 
We're gonna give you more content on what Costa Hawkins exactly is, but what Costa Hawkins has done is essentially prevent municipalities from introducing any stringent rent control measures. So if that's eliminated by this bill, by moving forward with Prop 21, what'll happen is any properties that are older than 15 years and anybody who owns more than two units so triplexes and bigger, and if you have three houses, you are now gonna be able to be subject to your local municipality setting up rent control provisions. So it's really gonna expand the power of local areas to control rent prices. Another big provision in this bill is it will end full vacancy decontrol. What that means is that currently, when a tenant moves out, the landlord can set the rent to market. So if somebody's only paying 1500 because they've lived there 10 years and now rents are 2000 that person moves out, landlord sets it at 2000 today's market value. Vacancy decontrol, if we don't have that, which this bill is gonna change that, you as a landlord would not be able to set it to market. You'd have different standards that you'd be capped on how much you can increase that uh, market rent for that unit. So between rent control, more stringent than what we have with AB 1482, uh, changing vacancy decontrol, and allowing local municipalities to set exactly how rent control is run, those are some of the big changes that Prop 21 would bring. And it would really cause some confusion as local municipalities have dramatically different rules just blocks apart from each other. So this is one to watch. Again, Prop 10 2.0, it was defeated in 2018, but with the sentiments right now, some of the tensions between landlords and tenants due to coronavirus, this one is gonna be one to watch. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Okay, you still with me? I hope I haven't bored you to death, but this is important stuff. The next exciting proposition we're gonna cover is Prop 15 with the catchy name, Tax on Commercial and Industrial Properties for Education and Local Government Funding Initiative. You'll remember that, right? Also known as the School and Local Communities Funding Act. So this is gonna to touch the third rail in California, which is Prop 13. Prop 13 is related to property taxes. And what it stated in 1978, when it was passed, is that the property taxes for real estate, all real estate, will be set at 1% of the value paid at that time. And the property taxes can only go up 2% every year thereafter at most. So we had values do this and property taxes did this. Interesting story, true story. Warren Buffett owned a home in Laguna Beach in Emerald Bay. He paid less in property taxes on that home worth over $10 million than he did for his childhood home he owned in Omaha, Nebraska. So that's what happens with Prop 13. So what this proposition states is that commercial properties and industrial, with some exceptions, no agricultural or multifamily properties, will be reassessed and the phasing in will start in 2022. They'll be reassessed every three years at minimum and they will all those properties will have their values taken to market value at the time. So their property taxes will go up. This will theoretically net between eight and 12 and a half billion extra dollars in the state of California every year. So you could see if it does make its way to schools and local communities, that's a lot of additional funding. The downside is that as those taxes increase, the property taxes increase, it's passed on to the business owners within those properties, and ultimately they have to pass it on to consumers. The other potential downside, we start chipping away at that third rail of Prop 13, and maybe it leads to a slippery slope, and ultimately it does affect multifamily, and then maybe even residential. So that is Prop 15 and another one to watch. Well, thanks for tuning in for this one. We know bills and propositions may not be the most exciting thing around, but Californians need to follow this, especially my viewers, landlords and tenants, buyers and sellers in California. If you found this helpful, hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you haven't and leave a comment below. What do you think of these bills? Should they pass? Which proposition should pass? We want to know your opinion. Let us know. We want to hear. This has been Christian Walsh, Cobalt Banker Wire Associates, 
And don't forget our email newsletter. Subscribe below and you'll get even more great content coming your way. Thanks so much.